Scott, the host of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. And you are listening to BCRN, all barbecue and grilling all the time. Start the game! Let's go! We'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! In a world permeated with barbecue websites under the control of tyrannical administrators, there was one man, a one-man army. He broke all the rules. He allowed his members to speak out, give their opinions, and make the website what it is today. Get ready for Greg Rempe and the Barbecue Central Show. From Cleveland, Ohio, it's the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome to the really big Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. We are broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rippey. Happy to have you aboard here on your Christmas Day evening. Great to have you. Can't believe that some of you have actually decided to join in. And as we say, do it live! Right? So first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for joining in live. If you're getting it on the podcast, shame on you. We did it right here Christmas Day evening or Christmas evening or whatever you want to talk about. Not Christmas Eve. That was last night. But Christmas evening, we are doing it. 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll go until 11 or a little after or until it makes sense. And then we'll call it a wrap. And then I will put it up on podcast and away we go. So as you have come to know, the show that is either right before Christmas, I don't recall having a show ever actually on Christmas before. So let's go ahead and break out the WPIX Yule Log. This is where I will get in trouble by YouTube, of course, probably getting ripped down as we speak. Because I don't have the rights. But behind me, Gracie Mansion. I think this was filmed in the 19... I think originally it was actually mid-60s. And there was some type of tussle about that. And it was ripped off the air. Then it was re-recorded. Released back into the early or perhaps mid-70s. And this is the one that I used to watch growing up as a youth. In what is called the Southern Tier, you would just call it New York State. The booming metropolis of Hornell, New York. Shout out to my folks in Hornell. Very happy to have you guys tuning in tonight if you are. But this is what was on the television. Oh, I, John, I changed nothing. The video quality. Like of me? No, I changed that. Trust me. When things work, I stick with. It could be not playing well with the video file, perhaps, but what can I tell you? So anyway, the fire behind me is what we used to watch Christmas Eve, and it ran for two hours. It was simulcast on WPIX Channel 11 for you New Yorkers. You'll understand what that is. But then it was also simulcast on their FM station, 102 WPIX, which I believe was One of those weirdo love song channels back in the day. Do they even have those? Is that middle of the road now or easy listening? But 102 WPIX only love songs was also simulcasting. So if you were running around on Christmas Eve in New York State or New Jersey or some surrounding area where you could pull this audio and or TV signal from, if you were in the car doing a little last minute running around, You didn't have to be in front of the television set 
where normal people watched a burning fireplace for hours on end. Having a few adult libations, getting some last minute gifts wrapped, stuff mounted under the tree, all that stuff. So if you wonder if it's your first time tuning in and you're wondering why I'm sitting by a toasty fire, here's why we did this because <laughs> your dad put it on and every year you went to your grandma's house this is what you watched and it became ingrained in you that this is exactly what's supposed to happen on Christmas you watch this Yule log but you can go on YouTube and search you, uh, Yule log and you'll get 50,000 returns and I'm here to tell you that all of those returns other than this one are bad those are false Fire crackling, dogs and cats laying in front of the toasty fire. Forget that. That's no Yule log. This is the Yule log. With those old classic standards playing in the background. And this great fire that for a span of two hours never ever needed to be replenished or given any more fuel. Didn't need to be stoked never seem to be burning out at all so hey that's what's great about it's like the magic you will love it burns they had it right at the great burning time it stayed true over a certain period of time which happens to be exactly two hours and then who knows maybe it fell apart right after that maybe they knew that because of the certain wood that they were using and gracie mansion drafted a certain way Taking into account all the thermodynamic components, they were able to put together this great fire. So this is what uh, Christmas was for me, Christmas Eve, uh, growing up, watching the Yule Log, getting everything ready, all the last preparations, and then running off to bed, hoping Santa didn't pass us by as he was racing across the other street. So there's your Yule Log. If you've become accustomed to seeing me talk in front of it, there you go. If you've never seen it before, that's why I'm doing it. You'll see it again next year. Probably won't be on Christmas Day, Again, I don't recall if there has ever been a Christmas Day show. We'll have to go back into the annals for that one, but I believe it's a no. I think I would remember that. That's a pretty long time. We've been over a number of huge days that fall on Tuesday. A lot of voting happens on Tuesdays. A lot of big sports things happen on Tuesdays, but I don't think a major holiday Maybe there, maybe there was a July 4th, something like that, but never one like it. This is really, if you're a Christian of some sort, this is kind of the pinnacle high holy day. Not Easter. Maybe I don't want to get into a religious debate because I really don't know what I'm talking about. But, I mean, look, it's a big commercial, baby Jesus, blah, blah, blah. This is a big event. Getting towards the end of the year, 2018, most rapidly coming to a close. So I don't know when the next time we'll... It, it will happen again, right? Maybe in another 10 years or 11 years or however long I've been doing the show, we will be doing a show live on Christmas night again, but it won't be next year. I can guarantee you that. So enjoy the fire through the rest of this segment and then let me tell you what's happening for the rest of the show. First and foremost, if you want to jump in on the show tonight, I'm more than happy to have you. It is a free phone call. My Christmas gift to you as the show is as well. 216-220-0966. If you would like to email the show, you can do that as well. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to greg at bbqcentralshow.com or on the Twitter and Instagrams at bbqcentralshow. And anything else you want to find out about the show, you can find at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. You can also subscribe to the show via podcast up at the top right there's a button called subscribe if you click that you'll be able to subscribe through uh, all the various podcast platforms and the show is widely available on all of them to include spotify i believe uh, pandora just started rolling out podcasts as well i don't think i'm listed on that i'm not sure exactly what the rule of thumb there is on that one but as soon as i get submitted into that and if that's your streaming choice i'll let you know when you can stream the show on pandora as well but spotify has it right now along with all the other most popular platforms in lieu of any of that if you're just an emailer and that's what you really like you can subscribe to the show on email you will get alerted believe it or not so 
That's how you can find the show. This is a special show. There was a really good chance that there was going to be a run of two weeks where it was going to be best of because of the holidays that fell on Tuesday. This is Christmas. Next Tuesday will be New Year's Day. I would say from a programming note, obviously live show tonight, there's a 99% chance that we will be doing a best of show where I reach out to my most trusted sounding boards and say, give me your top four or your top five best segments over the course of the year. And I'll go back and piece those together or portions of them and produce a best show next week for the live portion of it. If you podcast, it's always podcast, no big deal. But just to put a feeler out there, the possibility of a live show certainly is there, but the odds are stacked against at the moment. And it will be a best of show. But tonight it's live, local, and late breaking. And we are going to have roundabout two hours of embedded correspondence talk. That will include longest running embedded correspondent of the show, Doug Scheiding from Texas. Then we will have Tennessee correspondent Steve Ray. We will also have Oklahoma correspondent David Huff making a special appearance, the executive producer of the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. And I guess unofficial or official Michigan correspondent of the show, John Solberg, will be in. And he may or may not be making appearance, but Stover Harger III, or SH3, could be joining us as well, top of the second hour. So, there you go. We're all locked. We're all loaded. It's embedded correspondence. So, if you don't agree with something that they are saying or you want to jump in with your own take, get it to me through email or feel free to call in on the show. 216-220-0966. I'll mix you in. I promise. All right, let me talk to you quickly about Green Mountain Grills. Did you get one of these for Christmas? No? Oh, dear. Well, there might be specials still going on. Late Bird gets the worm, potentially. All you have to do is go over to GreenMountainGrills.com and check out their inventory. They have three units to choose from right now. Eh, Maybe four. They have that really big uh, catering pellet cooker trailer type deal, but... For the normal guy and gal like me or you, you can adorn your deck or patio with some of the bigger models. The Jim Bowie, that's the biggest one that they have. They also have a Daniel Boone model. Not as big as Jim Bowie, but certainly adequate for a family of four or five, depending on how big of parties you throw or how much you cook at any one given time. Daniel Boone certainly can handle it. Then if you're looking to also add a portable option, Softball is year-round anymore. Volleyball is just getting started here in the J.O. season. So maybe I want to bring the ability to barbecue with me while I'm in Indianapolis or while I'm in Louisville or while I'm in Philadelphia. Who knows? The Davy Crockett is right up my alley. Totally portable. 100% wood pellet fired. So I know I'm going to get that great smoke flavor that I've become accustomed to on the bigger units. But this one can go with me. And if I don't have access to a traditional power outlet... I can just go ahead and plug it in through the 12 volt adapter in my car. Doesn't get any easier than that. By the way, capacity, pretty damn good. How about a couple pork butts? I can feed a team of 50. I made two pork butts for a Christmas party on Saturday. You know, I think sometimes it's quickly overlooked how much meat and sandwich opportunity a pork butt can yield all by itself, let alone two. So if you can get two on a Davy Crockett, you're gonna be able to field a number of, or you can be able to feed a number of people. Anyway, you head over to GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. And check out everything they have to offer. They also have spices and sauces. Of course, pellets to fire those cookers. Don't forget to hook up if you have the Daniel Boone or the Jim Bowie with the pizza oven insert. You'll thank me later. Embedded correspondence coming up for the duration. On this Christmas, you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. Be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. 
Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Butcher's Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, seasonings, barbecue sauces, grilling oils. All the Butcher Barbecue products tested on the competition circuit as well as in backyards. Be the pit master of your neighborhood. Visit butcherbbq.com to stock up right this very instant. Don't even wait. All right, as promised, it is the Christmas edition of the Embedded Correspondence. So we race on over and welcome each and every Embedded Correspondent into the show. We have... At least on my monitor, Doug Shiding, top right. We have Steve Ray, top left. We have the gentleman from Michigan, bottom left, John Solberg. And a guy with a stogie in his mouth. That is David Huff from Oklahoma. Doug, you're under a shroud of cloud. Is everything okay over there? You have a Traeger yeah. fired up in your living room? Yeah, everything's fine. No, everything is not fine. What is going on? Hold on. Yeah. Somebody else say something real quick. Anybody? That's better. Okay. That's, that no, better. no, no. Hold on a second. I have uh, here we go. I had uh, I had the anonymity thing on. Sorry about that, boys. All right, try again, Doug. I'm here. Hey, all right. <laughs> Anybody else hear how that sounded? No. Okay. No, uh, good. All right. So here we go. It's a Christmas edition. First and foremost, I want to thank each and every one of you, gents, for. I guess, uh, really, I was going to dump the next two weeks of shows. I believe Steve Ray Steve Ray is kind of the, the cheerleader of having a Christmas show. Steve, what was the idea of having a show on Christmas Day night? My Christmas ends around 9.45 a.m. That early? Yeah. Yes. We have one teenager at home. Okay. The other children come over maybe at 12 and 1. We exchange presents. They take the loot. They're out of here. And we've got nothing to do. I mean, we literally watched five movies today. What was the best movie you watched today? Uh, the Bruce Willis one, Die Hard. Oh, not a Christmas movie, but okay. <laughs> that is, it is Christmas. But, but, okay, here we go. Let's get right into it. Uh, let's, it was at Christmas time. Let's quickly go around the panel. Doug, is Die Hard a Christmas movie, yes or no? No. Uh, David Huff, yes or no? Absolutely. Uh, okay. And uh, John Solberg, you are the tiebreaker. Die Hard Christmas movie, yes or no? Uh, no. Oh, okay. W then we win. The no's win. Thank goodness. So let me quickly then go through this movie. I'm trying to see if I had this up to even talk about. And I know the answers to this one from the two that just got shot down. But Trading Places, which, by the way, is one of the best movies ever on the face of the earth. But I find that to be a Christmas movie. Steve Ray, Christmas movie, yes or no? Um, no, 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 no. Okay, no. I think John Solberg has a new soundbite. Doug, uh, yes or no, Christmas movie? I'll go yes on that one. Of course. Uh, David Huff, yes or no, Christmas movie? If Die Hard is, that one has to be, too. Okay, and John Solberg, yes or no Christmas movie? No. Okay, well, at least John's consistent. I, of course, live in hypocrisy, which I love to do. Doug, why do you think one is more a Christmas movie than the other? Doug? Well, I, I it, number one, I think <laughs> Christmas is about miracles, and that trading places is about miracles of those two trading places and stuff. So I'm with you on that. Uh, Die Hard is just another action movie that happens to take place during Christmas. Oh, 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 hold on. That's right. Mary Bruce Brilliant. Willis could save all those people without a miracle? I mean, that's contradictory, Doug. <laughs> wow. I, you know, I would totally agree with that, David, except for the fact that there were also seven other Die Hard movies not set in Christmas, I believe. <laughs> And those weren't a Christmas movie, just to be clear. It's on, <laughs> it's on 24 hour marathon on the IHC network. Oh, my Lord. All right. So uh, I, I thank Steve for taking the lead here and saying, hey, well, I would be happy to sit in and do a show on Christmas night. And I said, OK, well, then I'm definitely going to do it. And I think the only person that was a little bit up in the air was David Huff. But here he is, too, in your bottom right screen. So the. 
the standard crew is here, plus one, which is the executive producer of the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less, and the official Michigan correspondent for the Barbecue Central show. Well, I guess that's official for you. Look at you. Merry Christmas to you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's start some debate topics uh, or, well, not debate yet, but let's quickly go around the panel again. It was Christmas. I don't know if everybody celebrates Christmas here on this panel. I don't want to make any assumptions, but if you don't, uh, go ahead and say you don't if you want. Uh, but best Christmas present of the day, David Huff. Well, I didn't get it today. I got it a little early, but it was my Christmas gift right here. The glass that got engraved Huff Daddy's Backyard Cigar Lounge, and it's got a placeholder to hold my cigar while I wow. drink whiskey. Best gift so far. That's really? handy. Wow. Does that, does that work really well? Uh, it's a little difficult to drink out of, but uh, the rest of it works well. It holds a cigar, and I even see, you know, you can... So you're probably, you're probably taking the cigar out while you're drinking it, and then otherwise you're just kind of putting the cigar that's lit in there to hold it otherwise. Yeah, I think it's to uh, avoid having to set your cigar on the ashtray and maybe having some other Yahoo uh, that you're smoking a cigar with pick up the wrong stogie and, you know, smoke yours. Are you a big smoker, uh, a big cigar smoker, David? Well, as long as the uh, my health insurance guys aren't listening. Uh, I do enjoy a smoke <laughs> a cigar every now and then. Usually if I'm doing a long cook, I like to smoke a cigar while I uh, wait for the grill to come up to temp. And are you one of those guys that likes to produce the biggest ash possible before you lend it off into the tray of some sort? So my rule of thumb is you let the ash fall when it's ready to fall. If it falls oh, early, I'm not upset about it, but you don't want to go tapping the cigar to knock the ash off. You let it do it on its own. Why? What happens? Um, I, I just don't like to tap the cigar and, and damage the cigar or um, it's knock a pretty, it off It's a pretty it's robust piece of equipment, right? I mean, the cigar is pretty <laughs> robust. Well, yeah, but you know, there's lots. Of, if you go to knock it off before it's ready, you'll get uh, what I call a cone, to where the the end of it in the middle is actually burning, to where it tapers down, and then it doesn't burn evenly. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other cigar tricks, by the way. If you're smoking a cigar and you get down to where it's too short and it gets real hot to smoke, blow through the cigar, clear out all the carbon that's built up in the cigar, and then when you pull it in, it'll be cool just like when you first started smoking it. So if it gets down too short and burns, blow through the cigar. Just a little tip. All right. Now, are you an inhaler or do you hold it in your mouth to savor and then puke it out? Yeah, puke it out. I, I don't like to inhale it. That's pretty robust smoke. I don't want it going into my lungs. All right. Let's but. quickly go around the table here. Steve, uh, are you a cigar smoker? Yes or no? No, I liked when David said you blow the carbon out that normally goes into your lungs. <laughs> blow it out. That's, that's helpful, right? Doug, are no. you a cigar smoker? Yes or no? <laughs> no, I, I've had uh, a few at some barbecue contests, but I, I haven't done one in about a year and a half, two years. John Solberg, cigar smoker, yes or no? No, I am not a cigar smoker, but I will if, you know, if it's a social need to do kind of thing, I, I can get through it. All right. Uh, great information there, Dave. We might have you on as a special cigar expert in case that ever rears its head in 2019. I had no idea that blowing out of a cigar made it cooler before you re-smoked it. Uh, I've never been a smoker myself, so uh, and I think the taste of cigars are really icky, so I won't do it. Also, cigarettes, too, and uh, anything else that burns that you put in your mouth, I think it tastes weird, so I don't kind of steer away from that. Um, so that was the cigar glass and cigar or the whiskey glass and cigar hole. That is pretty cool. Solberg, best gift of the day. Uh, actually today I have received no gifts and I'm okay <laughs> with that in my world. Uh, we're not big gift people. We do some white elf and stuff. Uh, so, uh, I got nothing. I'm not, I'm not bringing it because you really I, got, I, I, you I really had no, no gift. Today. You got no gift. No. Not today. No. What are you talking about? You just got named official Michigan and Betty correspondent. Well, I, I was going to be, I thought I'd be sucking up if I said, my best gift today was I'm actually here with you guys. But I'm like, man, that's some brown nosy stuff. You got to be careful. All right. nope. Everybody else says Steve it. would be ripping on me for that. But Join right best in. Best gift of the day is I'm here. That's Steve, weak. That's weak. Steve thinks I hung the moon. All right, Steve, best <laughs> gift of Christmas for you. I, I tell you, I went out this morning to get the paper. 
<laughs> and I'm usually I'm usually gone at, at uh, you know six o'clock in the morning, and in my driveway was a black Lexus RX 470 2019 with a big ribbon on the top. My wife went out and got that for me. Really? What? Holy and, moly! Uh, I got a bottle of whiskey though. But that was a good story. What? Uh, <laughs> wait a second. No. <laughs> I've always wanted that to happen. I got a I got a Yugo once when I was a kid. an a hole. Yeah. Um so <laughs> a nice bottle of ancient age whiskey though. Got, you know, I've got, often wondered if you if you're in a relationship and one or the other partner comes back home with a motor vehicle. I mean, are are you realistically are you okay with that are you like what the f because maybe it's something you didn't like or maybe it's something you really don't have budget for uh, i mean are you are you steve are you okay if your wife goes out and just buys a car and sticks it in the driveway for you uh for for me she wouldn't do that she might for her i, I got no problem with that <laughs> i'm paying for it anyway but she didn't have any credit she didn't have a job oh okay well, get, good uh, to know. Uh, mrs mrs ray sorry uh, st- uh <laughs> What about you, Doug? Like, would that be a weird thing? Do you think your wife would buy you a car and stick it in the driveway with a bow on it? No, I've I, I've done the same for her actually. When she was a uh, she graduated with a master's in uh, social work, and for her uh, graduation present, and at our holiday party, I actually had a friend pull up the car and brought the car out to the front door and it was an infinity g35 coupe which was a lot better than the forester she was looking at as well so (laughs) i preempted that and got the g what about you david would you be uh would you guys be at a at a moment of discontent if you found a new car in the driveway yeah this might sound hypocritical but i would be upset if my wife did that for me but i think it'd be pretty cool if i did that for her (laughs) so (laughs) Was that is yeah. that a sexist thing or is that a, a money thing or what? Is that a man versus a woman thing? Uh, no, not necessarily. It's just uh, I would feel bad if she spent that kind of money on me, but then, you know, I'm okay spending that kind of money on her. Oh, you're in love. That's what that is. Uh, what about you, Solberg? <laughs> I'm just scared. <laughs> yeah. I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. I'm like, it's a major investment. A car today of any caliber is more than my first home. It's yeah. something that needs to be discussed. Yeah. Agreed. yeah, I agree with that, too. So, uh, all right. So uh, where did we leave off here? Doug, uh, best Christmas gift of this Christmas. This Christmas. Yeah. The best Christmas gift I get was for my father. This is a serving slate serving platter wow. with my name last name engraved on it. And the funny thing is, is he said that this was the fourth one he had to receive because the <gasps> other three were broken when they came. No way. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, no. Yes. So he said, luckily he did it a, a month or so ago. But uh, yeah, that was my best gift that I got. So That's I cool, love Doug. this. I like that. Thank you. So how now, are you going to use that? Is that just going to be a showpiece? Are you really going to put meat on that and slice it and care for it? Yeah, I'm going to squeeze meat and post it on Instagram. Oh, dear. And, and, oh, dear. And, and use that as my my uh, serving tray background. Wow. Good juicy tray. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, are you really going to use it or no? Oh, yeah, I'll use it. Absolutely. Really? Okay. What what kind of a care is that? You just wash it off and can you soap that or is it porous? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. I have no idea. I've never had anything it's slate before like, in my life. It's probably like cast iron. So, yeah, I'll probably just oil it down and and uh, then use it after that but yeah you can just heck we had a cheese tray tonight why would have you i thought about using it for that yeah all right uh steve ray uh, last on the questions list for best oh wait no you got he, the car right yeah, yeah. You did. we, we lived up with, with doug getting yeah. his wife a Man. uh infinity g series car to pull up in front of orphanages yeah as a <laughs> door <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let's see i'm now let me quickly go through my mental inventory uh, my best gift goes between the power washer that I got, which uh, was totally unexpected, and the deep fryer, which I immediately pressed into service tonight just to see how well it worked. Oh, dear. Vacillating. Uh, I think overall the winner is going to end up being that power washer for me. If I'm if I'm forecasting in the long term, that thing is really going to pay dividends and save my back and really do a lot of stuff. So I'm very excited that I got the power washer. That was cool. 
Now, I did, uh, I'm going to speak for my wife here. Her best gift that I got her was the seven and a quarter quart uh, La Crusade Dutch oven in fire mm-hmm. engine red. Yes. Yeah. When you're rich like me, boys, you can load it up. That's right. So, uh, I've, you know, we've looked at all for five or six years. We've seen La Crusade and Crate and Barrel, or you'll see it on very, uh, very shopping networks that are supposed to have these great deals. And you're still like, holy F. These things are expensive. Could it possibly be worth? So I did months and months of research across the internet and talking with chefs and, and everybody said they were just the best. Great investment. Looks great. The care wasn't tremendous, which is good for me. So, Hey, we may, uh, well, I made the jump and got the, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Like we're saying whatever yeah. and, and got the seven and a quarter. I could have got the five and a half and saved like a hundred and some odd bucks, but Seven and a quarter is the biggest round one they make. You can do the all the big stews that you want. You can brown, you can bake, you can deep fry in it. You can do all that other crap. So uh, I think that was her best gift. But uh, And we won't ask her because if she says that wasn't her favorite, I would definitely be very depressed. So uh, there's the <laughs> best gift of the day. So now let's quickly whirl back around the panel and we'll start with Steve. Worst gift today was? Uh I, I didn't get a bad gift this year. No big spatula, no uh, dip bowl, no ceramic knives. Hmm. Uh, got good good sausage, good meat for. Uh, for didn't I didn't get anything bad. Didn't get a lot. I, um, I guess that's the bad part. Didn't get much. Nobody loves me down here. I got to tell you, Steve. I've used the ceramic knife set that you have given me a number of times. I can't find why you don't like them. They're a pleasure to work with. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh my god! All your, right. your knives must have been terrible. I guess, but I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy. Uh, Doug, worst gift today. Um, speaking of the ceramic knives, I did regift those already, and wow. the people that got those love them. Of course. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, my uh, my kind of strangest gift, I would say, is you see this Coca Cola tin. Yep. Yes. Um, my dad collects coins, and so this is a Coca-Cola coin. It is cert- cert- certified authentic, 14445 <laughs> made in Fiji, worth $1, and it has a Coca-Cola return. cap. Yeah. You see the little cap? Yeah. And s- silver on the inside. And that's a, wow. that's a, that's a U.S. tender coin right there? No. It's a Fiji coin. Fiji? Made, what? A Fiji coin. Oh, God. It's worth a dollar. So, I mean, yeah, that that is like one of the strangest ones um, that I got today. But uh, but let me just interject and say last year, I my all-time worst <laughs> gift was I've got the certificate of authenticity. I've got the bowl. This is from a bowl from a ship that sank in 1822 off the coast of China. This was also <laughs> from my parents. And, of, of course, you know, wow. it's got the nice silk, you know, you know, uh, uh, carrying case and everything. And then so it's got the imitation porcelain bowl yeah. of what was on the ship. And then I got this. Oh. This coin. <laughs> is that a Chinese coin? <laughs> That's a Chinese coin. Wow. This is a cash coin back in 1822. Too bad yeah. if you oh. lived in every other country but the United States, you'd kind of be rich. <laughs> exactly. How so, many other varying yeah. coins do you have? Um, my dad, who has started collecting coins in the last five years, um, mm-hmm. gives me at least one or two coins every year. So my my. Favorite coin actually is one that's shaped like a baseball glove. And where and where is that legal tender? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's one of those limited edition things. <laughs> All right, uh, David Huff, worst gift of the day. Uh, I got some real special shit. <laughs> okay. No, no, literally, I got special shit rub <laughs> wow uh, it is from the big cock ranch yes. the vision of big disparity ranch. ranch yeah that's right so uh any historian of this show will know that i had the owner of big cock ranch on several years ago talking about their shit rub it was <laughs> kind of one of the more entertaining and less entertaining interviews all at the same time uh solberg any 
Any bad gifts? I know you said you really didn't get anything, but I mean, <laughs> anything Man, bad? I'm a loser on this show. I got nothing. I'm going to just claim the Solberg's not actually Norwegian and we don't do Christmas, but <laughs> that's not true. No, I, I got I got no bad gifts. Right. I think uh, I got no gifts. My worst gift, and I don't have it here to show because I gave it to my daughter immediately after the white elephant party was over last night, was the coffee mug shaped like a toilet bowl. That's right. The Big John. It was like in all of the checkout line end caps. And it's a big coffee mug. And it holds a lot of coffee. And then it's got a tank on the bed. It looks like a friggin' turlet. So I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to use this. And my youngest daughter was like, this is the best gift ever. <laughs> so I rewrapped it up last night. And guess what she got for Christmas? A toilet <laughs> mug. Look at me. Smart. Regifting. All right, uh, we are quickly into the first segment break here, guys. So stand by while I do a quick bit of business. It's the embedded correspondence all the way through the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to jump in. 216-220-0966 or greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. All right, let me talk to you quickly about Cook Shack, manufacturers of smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience, whether you barbecue in the backyard, on the competition circuit, or in a five-star dining facility. Cook Shack has the units that will do the job, and with a full line of barbecue sauces, spices, pellets, and wood chunks, it's the perfect one-stop shop. Cook Shack strives to be your barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, Smoke and Grilling 101s in a video cooking classroom. Check out their website at cookshack.com or follow them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Pinterest. You can get advice and share your passion for barbecue on their world-class barbecue forum. Yeah, they have one of those. Cook Shack pellet-fired smokers, the choice of champions, because they were designed by a champion, Ed Fast, Eddie Morin, the FEC 100, PG 1000, always customer favorites. The PG 1000 can actually double as a smoker and a grill. Low and slow, hot and fast, the pellet grill line gives you the most for your money. Cook Shack Residential Electric Smokers, which I have one, number one smoker in the industry. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything you can cook in your oven, you can make in a Cook Shack. Passion and dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing with quality always being at the forefront. Get the best in barbecue since 1962. Call 800-423-0698 or visit cookshack.com. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. You can visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also visit Amazon.com to purchase as well. Don't forget to download the Cookin' Pellets app that will alert you to great shipping prices when they become available, whether it be through CookinPellets.com themselves or Amazon.com. Looking forward to having Chris Becker on the show soon. And we rejoin the guys from the Embedded Correspondence. You know them, you love them. Steve Ray is there, Doug Scheiding's there, John Solberg, and David Huff. All here via Christmas. Thank goodness. It's like a Christmas miracle that this show's happening. We just went around the panel and said what our favorite gifts were. You're and also listening what... to the Barbecue Central Show. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. You know, I can do that too. I can do it all day long. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Okay. Uh, Steve. Hey, Greg. Greg. Yeah. Greg. Ho, what? What? ho. 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 One minute. Okay. Ho, You're listening one. to the Barbecue Central Show. You're this listening show. to the Barbecue Central Show. This show is being hijacked. Oh, yeah? By, by, yes, it is. By the embedded correspondence. This is your Christmas lightning round, and we're going to throw it over from Oklahoma. David Huff, do your thing. Oh, David. Man. All right. Greg, are you ready, sir? First off, just to let you know, I'm seeing on Facebook that it says the live show, the live feed went down. Are you aware of that? Uh, oh, yeah, I see that now. Hold on. Let me see if I can rectify that situation. I don't pay attention to anything when the show is on because it's 
really just all about the podcast, but nevertheless. All right, it's uh, it's finding its way back to Facebook. All right, go ahead. All right, here we go, Greg. This is my lightning round? You got it. Okay. Barbecue Hall of Fame or 1 million Facebook followers? 1 million Facebook followers. Pork ribs or beef ribs? Pork ribs. Barbecue sauce, sweet or spicy? Spicy. Neighbor Desmond or Ina Garten? Neighbor <laughs> Desmond, of course. <laughs> Browns win the Super Bowl or daughter makes Olympic volleyball team? Daughter makes Olympic volleyball team. Who gives a shit about the Browns? <laughs> Which do you hate more? Someone butchering your last name or being called Gregory? Uh, last name butchered all the time. Surfing or skiing? Ski. Superpower, flying or invisibility? Flying. Filet or ribeye? Fil ribeye. Someone steal your car or someone steal the smokers from your backyard? Steal my car. Complete grill work setup or cooking class with Tuffy? Grill work setup. All right, that was easy. Off to John Solberg. Thank you, thank you. Oof. I'm pretty Favorite good. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Are there choices? One. What's your favorite uh, flavor ice cream? This is a lightning round. We got to go fast here. Chocolate. Say a word in Spanish. Hola. Do you believe in fate? No. Name one of the seven dwarfs. Grumpy. Are you politically correct? Never. Make a high-pitched noise. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have you ever sorry. tasted soap? Yes. Name something you could eat for an entire week straight. Pizza. What is your favorite word? Fuck. <laughs> and if Tupac were to appear before you right now, what would you have to say? Sing holla if you hear me. It's my favorite song. Take it away, Doug. I'm killing it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Flay Alton or Michael Simon, your new best buddy. Flay. Oh, interesting. Offset or pellet cooker? Pellet. Oh, good answer. <laughs> 10,000 Instagram followers or Ina Garden? 10,000 Instagram followers. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Instagram pics of sliced steaks or squeezing of meat? Squeezing of meat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Steak Ager Master 45 or Primitive Pit Babe? Oh, Primitive Pit Babe, for sure. Okay, okay. Sterling Ball or Sam the Cooking Guy? Oh, what? Oh, thank you. Sam the Cooking Guy, of course. <laughs> Snake River Farms, Crowd Cow or La Frida? La Frida. Brine or Inject? Inject. Jack, Houston Rodeo, Royal, or Memphis in May? Houston Rodeo. Ah, good one. We need to get you down there for that. <laughs> Le LeBron, Kyrie, or Baker Mayfield, your new best buddy? LeBron, uh, for always and forever. He won a championship for me. Okay, good. All right. Steve-O. Oh, Mr. All Production. Right. Greg, <laughs> Top or bottom? Mm, top. <laughs> Giver or taker? Taker. CNN or Fox News? Ugh. CNN. Jennifer Garner or Jennifer Aniston? Jennifer Garner all day long. Yeah, Hugh baby. Or Denzel Washington? Oh, who was the first one again? I'm sorry. Hugh Jackman or Denzel? Oh, Denzel Washington. Washington all day. Common or Tom Morello? Tom Morello. The chicken or the dumpling? Dumpling. Bombardier, Lear, or Citation? Citation. Olive or pickle? Pickle. And for the $1 million, sweet or unsweet iced tea? Uh, sweet iced tea. Congratulations. I did it! Wow. Look did at it. that. Un a total impromptu lightning round by the embedded crew. Great questions. See, now I just want to point out to everybody watching that might be a guest on this show, that is how you do a goddamn lightning round. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Right here. Well right here.
Now, John was a little bit more inquisitive without giving me options and just asking me quick. That's why I was a little off the game there because I wasn't getting a couple options. But, you know, let's just rifle off these answers. I mean, we're not solving the world's problem. Although I know everybody is shocked that on two separate occasions I was offered Ina Garden and I rebuffed her both times. Thank yes, John. That Sulfur. was surprising. That was John Sulfur's idea. Yeah. And it was a hey, idea. Greg, I know there's no right or wrong answers, but I think you missed one. Okay, go ahead. Jennifer Gardner versus Jennifer Aniston. Appropriate could have been both. No, th that is not. Wait, <laughs> that is not. Andrew, you are not. The <laughs> that is not an appropriate answer because both, <laughs> although a good movie with X's in front of it, is not a good answer in the lightning round. You have to have a definitive yes or no, right? There's you exceptions in everything. I heard that. They would be one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, so uh, anything else uh, hidden that I need to be aware of? No? Okay. Not, so, or not right now. All right, so we went through and we did best gifts. We did worst gifts. Do we want to go to a little debate on the holiday side of things? Yes? Okay, great. I'm not giving you an actual answer or opportunity to answer. I'm just looking at the eyes widen and figure out, okay. Uh, maybe you're aware that ever since Halloween ended, Christmas music has been rifling through the airwaves, whether it be satellite or the terrestrial type airwaves. And there has been a little bit of a run amok with one particular song called Baby It's Cold Outside. So much so that a local radio station here in Cleveland pulled it off the air saying that that song was a little rapey and that it was giving the uh, the male seemed to be forcing himself and the lady was not being able to be let go and that of course spawned some really neat viral YouTube uh, answer videos with baby just go outside I don't know if anybody saw that or not but this is going to sound really contrived on my part but Right as the Christmas music was hitting the airwaves, I heard the song and I was thinking to myself, man, now that I'm really listening to the lyrics, not that I was really not listening to the lyrics before, I was like, this song sounds a little weird all of a sudden. Now, a year ago and five years ago and 10 years ago, I never would have thought that. But given the whole Me Too movement and the top people in most of the entertainment world, some news people world, other famous people getting caught up in uh, sexual misconduct and all of this stuff uh, for the last 12 months or so. Now when I'm hearing the song, I'm thinking that's now I didn't think it would ever get to the point where it might get ripped off the air. But knowing what we know and seeing what we've seen over the last 12 months, a long way to get here. Steve Ray, do you have a problem with the song Baby It's Cold Outside? Is that something that has rapey undertones and should it be pulled off the air? No, I don't think so. I've never, I never really listened to the words until I, I saw the controversy. You know, the Sting song, Every Breath You Take's worse than that. The Stalker song. <laughs> and he makes thirty, he makes $3,500 a day off of Every Breath You Take. And that's, that's about a guy stalking a woman. So they don't take that one off. What about you, Doug? Any issues with Baby It's Cold Outside? No, it, you know, the problem, it, the song obviously has not changed in, 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 since it was written. And it was written by a husband and wife, may I add. So it's, it's the, the totally overblown PC world that we live in right now. So, I mean, uh, if anything should be banned, Feliz Navidad should be banned since it only has 19 words in the whole damn song. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, and every time you hear that, you hear it, you hear it in your head for the last, you know, for another day. You know, ne next we're going to have uh, uh, Saw Mama Kissing Santa Claus. That should be banned because, they, you know, that's inf infidelity. And uh, All I Want for Christmas is You, you know, by Mariah Kell. You know, that's pretty sexual. We better ban that too so no uh let's let's just take things it, if it's a real me too movement let's let's address real issues not something like this doug i don't want to uh, break the mystique for you but the i saw mama kissing santa claus that's actual the that's the mom and the dad making out and the kid doesn't realize i don't know if i just ruined anything for you or not but that's what that sounds oh, about. Uh, well, well <laughs> well we're still not going to ban it anyway okay uh david huff uh, your thoughts 
all due respect to the Me Too movement, because I think sexual harassment and those issues are very serious. Let's just calm down a little and don't mess with my Christmas songs. I mean, maybe it's cold outside. Yeah, I listen to the words. Maybe it's a little risque. But have you heard Santa Baby? I mean, she's using her sexuality to get all kinds of things that she doesn't need. Ooh, let's let's just slow down. Just everyone's got an opinion in today's society, and they feel like it has to be heard. It, it, don't get me started. I apologize. Just no. The Christmas song is fine. No problems. John Solberg, you have the last word. The biggest tragedy is, first of all, we have to start listening to Christmas music shortly after Halloween. <laughs> Once you get beyond that, that's a bigger first, tragedy. First uh, no, I, it's a it's a classic Christmas song. Is that a, would you consider it a Christmas standard? No, yeah. I never sensed it before. I think it was just some type of. Uh, do you think the radio station was trying to create this controversy for? You know, Facebook hits. I, yeah, I, sure. I don't understand any yeah, of it. absolutely. I think that there was some kind of a, a marketing drive employed in that whole thing. But you know, when I was listening to it this year, again, this was well before any of this actually hit. And while I do think there's a marketing component for the the station here in Cleveland, uh, just listening to the word. And, and and you know, I'm a little. I have three daughters. I uh, maybe am a little closer to. I don't think this, the song should be taken off the air or anything other than just listening to it, given everything that's happened and listening to the words and going, well, now that I'm hearing it in a, a different colored picture, that song sounds a little weird. But I'm not also sitting here saying that we should dump it off the air either. So, uh, Well, it's gone. End of the day, that song's gone. It's done. It's going to be out of our consciousness, and we'll talk about it in some other context in the future. But... You know, it's it's over for that tune. We won't hear that again anytime soon. Here was the other thing that I heard coming up about now not a song but a movie. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was going to be pulled from television because it was too bullying. Steve, your thoughts? Hell yes. Hell I mean, they, yes. That little ill. That's right. That little elf has got, I mean, that, that show's got to go, man. I mean, I was that little elf when I was a child. You wanted to be a dentist? I wanted to be a dentist, and I was picked on, and the abominable snowman stalked me, and God only knows if he'd have caught me. That, that's got to go. And, 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 and Frosty the Snowman, God almighty, running around with no clothes on, talking to kids. Gee whiz, hang out in mm -hmm. a wall in the parking lot. Good God. Doug Shining, Rudolph the Red-Nosed <laughs> Reindeer, yes or no? You gotta leave it. it. It's I looked it up. It's the most beloved Christmas movie. Eighty three percent say it's a, a good movie. So it, it, it's the Jackie Robinson of Christmas movies because it's about being uh, you know different than your your other the other reindeer and being the the leader of the group and being successful, et cetera. So uh, I think it's more about uh, diversity coming through and all of us being as one together as, as compared to being bullied and should be banned. David Huff. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is not the problem. The oversensitivity of America is the problem. Leave the Christmas movie. John Solberg. Leave it alone. I have a choice. I can watch it or I cannot. It's up to me how I raise my family to react to that bullying on that show. Uh, I'll weigh in before we go to the next break. And I just want to make sure that everybody remembers that while Rudolph took a little bit of a drubbing for having an electric nose, in the end, in the end, what happened? He bagged the hottest dough. He got to lead the sleigh. He won. Perseverance overcoming achieving showing everybody that you're better than them you can lead the sleigh too in fact the big guy, the most popular man in the place said that i can't do it without your nose so he should have said santa kiss my ass and i want a pay raise and then i'll be thinking about taking that sleigh hey, out did you, notice that, did you notice that the prospector carried a colt 45 with him and he never pulled it out and shot the abominable snowman. Yeah, what was up with that? What was up with that? I don't know. That's not that guy, knowing your surroundings. That guy was instant safety. <laughs> that guy's been carrying too long. He forgot that he actually had the weapon. All right, uh, we are headed into the second break here, talking with the embedded correspondents. 
A little bit of political correctness talk. And a lightning round thrown in. How about that? John Dawson weighing in. America is still addicted to outrage. Willy Wonka can't be far behind. The Backyard Barbecue Show weighing in saying, listen to some rap music, but snowflakes have to attack Christmas classics, music, and movies. That's right. Somebody, when we come back, somebody's going to have to explain to me what a snowflake is. I hear that term all the time. I don't know if it's good or bad. Or I want to see if I'm one, I guess, is what I'm really trying to say. And if it's bad, I don't want to be one. So let's figure out a way for me to get out of it right off the top. All right, let me talk to you quickly about Big Papa Smokers. The one-stop online shop for all things barbecue. Their curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at Big Papa Smokers has been Pitmaster approved by Sterling Big Papa Ball himself. They're known for the championship rubs and seasonings, popular flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Prod, Cash Cow. All proven winners on the competition circuit and in the backyard. If you're looking to improve the flavor of your competition barbecue, check out the West Coast offense combining Big Papa Smokers rubs and simply marvelous barbecue. Over the past number of years, West Coast offense has cornered the market on competitive barbecue and redefines the flavor profiles that cooks from across the country start to aim for. They also own Granny's Barbecue Sauce. If you're looking for a new go-to sauce that will please everyone, check out Granny's traditional yet powerful flavoring reminding us why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. Don't forget the great selection of cookers, a Mac two-star general pellet grill, an old hickory ace BP, an M grill from Texas, just to name a few. It's clear that Big Papa's is the place to go for all things barbecue related. They can help you barbecue better. They can boost your barbecue skills. All you need is some help from Big Papa himself. The number one online barbecue store. Call them toll free at 877-828-0727 or shop the website bigpapasmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A smokers.com. All right, stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. Embedded correspondents are in. Doug Scheiding, Steve Ray, John Solberg, David Huff. Uh, Backyard Barbecue Show is weighing in. As far as what a snowflake is, that's a term for someone that thinks they are unique and special, but really are not. Well, bad news, boys. He just described me to a T. Great. Well, now I got to... John, we need some PR work here. I need to not be a snowflake. I don't know how that... How I can get out of that scenario, but... Let's think about some hypocritical statements I can make to get me right on board. All right. Uh, we are pointing to the second hour here. Gentlemen, anything else uh, publicly related, uh, politically related that we need to hit on before we go to the second hour? We'll have our Pacific Northwest correspondent calling in as well. Steve, anything from you? No, it's been a good, been a good question. All right. Uh, <laughs> Doug, anything from you? Doug's on mute. Yeah, 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 I'm on mute. Thanks. You, you know, so you don't hear my heavy breathing. Thank but, you. Uh, uh, but uh, if you've ever been to a barbecue contest, you've probably heard the song "Buck Cherry" crazy <laughs> bit. And I mean, I love the beat of that song. You know, I just kind of so I actually bought the CD and uh, listened to the lyrics, and I'm like, "OMG, <laughs> that's a little much." But I still play the song every now and then. But anyway. So, David Huff. but uh, it's a good barbecue song. David Huff. Uh, no. No? All right. Uh, John Solberg, any parting shots for you? No, the thing about politics and barbecue is I don't know any of your politics. We're all great friends. That's the beauty of barbecue. There's there no politics in it. All right. We're pointing to the second hour. Stick around. We'll be your light back and refresh. It's the Christmas show. My our Christmas gift 
to you, the Centralite public. Hopefully you're enjoying your Christmas Eve evening. Damn it. That was yesterday. Stick around. We'll be right back. What's up? This is JM, host of the Celebrity Grill podcast on iTunes, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Network. All barbecue and grilling, all the time. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How is it <laughs> You have a great show of a big fan. Boing. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish! What? He ate two feet before we knew. Oh listen, Laverne, it's a shut your face. Yeah, I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. All right, just like that, we are in the second hour. Uh, Stover's calling in, but I believe I'm limited to just four people, maybe, on Skype. Is that right? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see if I can add him here. Mm, okay. Add. All right. Let's see what happens here. I have no idea. He might be getting called. Let's see what happens. It's all standby. Just over? No, not there yet. Just over. Hello? No, can't hear him. Not there. Right, let me try one more time. Go to the... Hmm. Mute? You guys on mute? Hold on. Yeah, of course. Jeez. Stover, you there? Anybody else there? Steve, you can hear me, right? Yep. Right. I'm yagging. Yeah, that's weird. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, okay. Steve, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, all right. Doug just got... Doug, are you on hold now? No, I'm I'm good. Uh, good. Stover says, "Call him again." I'm calling him right now. Mother f. Hmm. He's watching the L- he's watching that Ellen special on. Netflix. He said the call was from Tunisia, so he denied it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. All right, let me try again. Add. Yes. Okay. So it should not show up from Tunisia. I have a I buy a two one six number here. Also, Doug. Stover, are you there? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. There he is. Right, now I got to figure out how to get Doug back into normal. Ugh. Well, I don't who care cares? about Doug. I, I know, but I mean, you know. for Stover, the, Stover I just helped you out. That's right. <laughs> hey, you were asking what a snowflake was, Greg. Yeah. So I'm you, a snowflake. So, well, evidently so am I. Somebody that thinks they're special, but we're really not. Yeah, but you know it's our time of the year. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right, especially here in Cleveland or wherever it's cold. Um, you're part of the Embedded Correspondence Christmas Special, by the way. Just calling in on the phone from the Pacific Northwest is Stover Harger the Third, or SH Three, as he is affectionately referred to here on this show. Uh, Stover, do, do you have any thoughts on any of the stuff that we have? covered so far the first hour that you wanted to weigh in on or do you have some topics you would like to bring to the table right off right off the rip well uh for the first half of the show i was watching the second half of mary poppins returns so <laughs> i didn't quite catch most of it uh but i do have something to bring to the table uh, right. you got a lightning round sound effect there greg do i of course <laughs> what are you, who are you talking to <laughs> This is a very original segment I'm bringing to the table here. 
and I'm going to hit you with the lightning round coming at you. First coming question, at. Greg. Yeah. Would you rather eat oatmeal cookies or die in a chimney? Eat oatmeal cookies. All right. Okay. Next question. Would you rather open fun presents or die by choking on reindeer dung? Choking on reindeer dung. Okay. Last question. <laughs> Would you rather enjoy a pleasant evening with family or be eaten by the Grinch? Oh, eaten by the Grinch, of course, just for the shock value alone. Of course. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, that was my segment. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you want to do a talk out now? I have the, the talk out music up. All right. You've been listening to Stover's Lightning Round, the most original segment ever in the history of barbecue podcasting. I mean shows, or is it a podcast? I'm out. The best music, by the way. Hey, I'm, I'm still here, Greg. I know. I couldn't. I could just listen to that show all day. The, the electronic <laughs> clapping in that song is just unbelievably well placed. So, uh, Stover, how was your I, how was your Christmas? My Christmas is great. It's still going on. You know, I'm three hours ahead from you. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, I'm not wine deep like the rest of the boys. Uh, best Christmas gift? Oh, check this out, Greg. And the rest of the guys are going to like this. I got my very first meat grinder. Isn't that uh, that app? That uh, no, Oh, wait. <laughs> meat grinder. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, worst, I'm going to wor- grind up that brisket. Worst worst gift of the night. Day. Well, considering I'm, I'm in my mom's guest bedroom on the phone right now, I'm not going to call out any gifts I received from my family or loved ones. <laughs> yeah, smart man. All right. I'm a delicate snowflake, Greg. I heard that. So am I. So, all right, let's get back into some more topics that we can banter back and forth about. Uh, and let's, uh, well, let's start with you, Sover, since you're calling in for the segment here. Um, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years about uh, sous vide. Uh, we saw in 2017, I thought it was really starting to take off. And it was, at least in the beginning of the year to mid year, really trending up. And then I think by the end of the year, I had, called for its trend down or actually out by the end of 2017 did not out by any stretch of the imagination uh it's probably found its life footing at this point i don't think it's going to go up or down any more than it is without some type of a major game changer which for what it is i don't know how much more you could change it it's already on its own app you can control it through a phone that's pretty much where your life expectancy is going to be at now so are you a sous vide for or a sous vide against the barbecue and or grilling or just in general stuff uh, you know, I'm never going to be smirch another foodie trend because, uh, you know, I'll never put it past myself to try something, uh, you know, but I, I think it is a trend. It's fashionable to use a word that no one else understands. I get this. It's fun. Uh, however, when it comes to equipment, I don't have any counter space. I don't want another piece of something in my house. Uh, we've already decided, we've already figured out how to cook these things. Why do we keep, uh, keep needing to be tinkering, you know, plus. It's a little too close to simmering for me. Like Doug, cooking in water. Doug, are we for or against sous vide? Uh, I'm for sous vide, and I am actually really surprised it hasn't taken off more than it has because uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't, you know, like Stover says, they don't know what the hell it is. And, uh, you know, and as we talked about in last month in terms of heating up barbecue and things like that. So um, my wife actually got me some reusable sous vide bags that I can put barbecue in and you can reuse these bags to heat up. So she she actually is encouraging me to uh, to use my sous vide uh, uh, machine a little more. Steve Ray, yes or no? For I, or against? I am for sous vide if, if you want to cook at home and and prepare it that way or i know a lot of chefs use it to to really um uh cook a lot of steaks if they're like a banquet but i think they need to outlaw them at um competitions uh i know they're legal at state cook-off association i don't know if the new kcbs state contest will make them legal but i think they need to be ruled illegal at those and let's put the steaks back on the grill where they belong in competition. If why if if there's rules that say any by any means necessary then what do you care? 
I just I just don't think it's 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 it shows a talent. You throw a steak in a plastic bag, you set the water at 135 degrees and you let it sit there and then you pull it out and then you you brown it on both sides, you turn it in. But whoop de do. Who, who can? What are you talking about? <laughs> who said that? Would you heat something up and make it taste good? I just don't think you ought to do it in a competition. I'm not I'm not I'm not down at it if you want to do it at the at your house. If you're too lazy to do a whole steak out there on the grill, <laughs> the don't, don't bring it to my competition. It won't be in my competition this year. Two guys, three guys did it last year in my competition. So came in for came in first, second, and third. Yeah, so they're third they're year. not going to be able to participate in your competition, is what you're saying, or they're going to have to learn how to do it on the on a grill. You get to learn to do it on your PK. Wow, like a man. That's pretty snobbish of you, Steve. Uh, David from Oklahoma, what do you think? Oh, oh, he's conflicted. I'm about to, wow. I, 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 I'm about to throw up, but I have to say I agree with Steve on something. <laughs> that a baby. The, I agree with him on the competition. Um, it, it, if you're heating it up, anyone can set a dial and throw some, some rub on it. As far as sous vide in general, I am for sous vide for certain things. Um, warming up barbecue, definitely. Um, I warm up brisket that I've pre-cooked. Um, in the sous vide and it retains a lot of moisture. It's fantastic. Uh, fish and poultry for sure. If you want to get precise on cooking to the right temperature, you don't have to cook it up to 165 to be safe. You can cook it to 150 and leave it there for a amount of time, kill all the pathogens and bacteria and have a much more uh, tender and juicy poultry. Um, but actually, believe it or not, for red meat, I'm not a big fan of sous vide. I think there are certain things that need the grill flavor from the beginning. Um, and I do not like sous vide for my steaks. All right. Uh, so stand by John and stand by me because we both have sous vide thoughts here. I'm sure I don't want to speak for John, but I'm sure he's got a thought or two. Sous vide. So stand by Stover. You stand by too. I want to talk to you quickly about the folks over at the Barbecue Guru. Longest running sponsor of the show, always believing that outdoor cooking should be easy because it can be, especially with the Monolith Barbecue Guru Edition Grill. The Monolith is the world's first temperature controlled smoker with a built in power draft fan. This means smarter control, greater freedom with automatic temperature control. Easily choose your cooking time, temperature, and let the Monolith do the work of a sous chef or a barbecue pit master. With minimal effort, you now have oven like precision at the grill. And you can serve the tastiest, juiciest meals each and every time. Here's the deal. I tell you each and every week, if you already have an automatic pit temperature controller from the Barbecue Guru and you order a monolith, because the fan is already built in, you don't have to buy a new controller. Don't worry. You can take your current controller, hook it up to the fan. You're off and running. If you want to upgrade that technology, certainly more than welcome to do that at that point. If you have any questions, give them a call. 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. Or you can visit the website, bbqguru.com. If you have any questions, make sure you call them. They'll make sure you're out, up and running right out of the box. Uh, we are back with more Embedded Correspondence Holiday Edition. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. The only show giving you a monthly visit from a doctor of barbecue, a man actually named Meathead, the author of a barbecue Bible, bloggers, reviewers, competitors, and manufacturers by the dozens. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. If you are cooking and supporting Smithfield, you need to go over to smokingwithsmithfield.com and sign up for their Committed Cooks program or at least see if there are spots left. I think for 20 or 25 bucks, you get over a couple hundred dollars worth of Smithfield swag sent back in return. Again, that's smokingwithsmithfield.com. If you are cooking with their products, you want to also head back there because you can submit your first place's winnings in ribs and pork through that website as well. I believe, not next week, but the week after that, uh, Belinda... Mm, 
Belinda, the lady from Smithfield, whose last name I can't remember because she got married, will be on to talk about uh, the grant program winners, and we'll also be talking about uh, how many spots of the committed cooks are available, all that good stuff. So that's Smithfield again, smokingwithsmithfield.com. We're talking with the embedded correspondents here on a Christmas evening. And also, Stover, Stover, do I need to make you a, hmm, I need to figure out how I want to word this. Do I want to make you a Pacific Northwest embedded correspondent or an Oregon correspondent? Oh, you know I represent the entire West Coast, Greg. So be it. So be it. I'll tell you that my, my prior podcast, Greg. What uh, was that? Barbecue show. You were on a, you were on a podcast? <laughs> yeah, back in the olden days. Uh, they actually have a West Coast correspondent. I, I was thinking, don't I live on the West Coast? Yeah, but we actually need people that know what they're talking about. So I'll give you the top <laughs> portion of that country, but we really need people that have some type of expertise. <laughs> we're not just going to throw around titles willy-nilly over here. I mean, next thing you know, we're going to be giving titles to guys in Oklahoma for crying out loud. All right, so. I'll be the, the East Portland correspondent. East Portland? No. How about just the straight-up Oregon <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Yeah, all, right, all right. Hey, you know, before before you get going, Greg, I want to hijack the show real quick. I have a new cooking method that I want you guys to hear about, okay. um, a new foodie trend. The competition guys are going to hate this. And I normally don't cook with gas, but here's how it goes. You take a ribeye, salt, pepper, and you squat over it, and you just fart. <laughs> and that's it. Bad idea. Bad idea. Stank meat. I don't want to answer for everybody, so we quickly go around the panel. Steve, stank meat, yes or no? No. John Solberg, yes or no on stank meat? No, stank meat. Doug Scheiding, yes or no on stank meat? No. David Huff, stank meat? Are you really asking this question? I guess yeah. I am. Wait, what did you say? Did you say no? And that's been another round of the lightning round. Wait. David, what did you did you say no? Yeah, I said no. Oh, okay. Oh my god. I thought you said yes. I was like, what? Like you are really just trying to buck the trend. Uh, I, oh, by the way, just Official so it's you, shithead title. Uh, just so we're aware, uh, uh, making it unanimous, I am totally and one hundred percent against stank meat. I will never be a stank meat believer. There's no way I would ever do that. Uh, all right, so we're being joined by Oregon correspondent Stover Harger the Third, Steve Ray, John Solberg, Doug Shining, and David Huff, uh, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Michigan, and Texas. Let me get back to my thing. All right, so uh, let me go back to you, John Solberg. We were talking about sous vide for or against, and it's raged quite a bit of spark on Instant Messenger, which we'll get to here in a second too. But your thoughts? You know, if someone, I'm, I, there's lots of ways to get to Chicago. If, if someone can cook any way they want to cook, if you want a mindless, pointless, easy, <laughs> no skill required, no touching, no feeling, science has your back. You don't have to learn anything. You don't have to do anything. Sous vide is a way to go. It can be convenient. I think it's a handy tool. But I've left barbecue forums over the fact that people are barbecuing sous vide and calling it sous vide cue and it's like no that's not what the you know don't make it what it's not make it a tool for your kitchen use it and don't tell me you're cooking because you're not you're heating up some crap in a boiling bag you know i got some cauliflower steamers in my freezer i throw them in the microwave same difference there's nothing wrong with it i have a crock pot it's the same difference don't tell me you're cooking you're putting something in a bag and then searing it off so uh, uh, no, it's not. You know, no, no, no. Don't tell me you're cooking. I will get angry. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let me go back around here. And if we have to be hypocritical and we're living in hypocrisy, which I love to do, make sure you're calling yourself out on it. Steve Ray, do you use some type of automatic pit temperature control device on your cooker? Yes. Okay. You should not be allowed in any barbecue competition at all because you're not cooking. Yeah. You're just setting that device, and it's doing all the fire management for you. I am, I am babysitting it. I am spritzing it. I am probing it. I am turning it. Wah. I am turning it over. Ugh. I'm checking it. In fairness, when I'm sous vide my steak, I do put my hands on the bag and flip it over. And then put the top back on. It's the same <laughs> well, thing. Well, I don't care what you do to yourself while you're sous vide, Greg. <laughs> it's 
it's just a different thing. All right. Well, I mean, that's. A, I mean, it's a little hypocr- uh, hypocritical, isn't it, Steve? Not, look, look, no, it's not. Are, it's, are you sure it's I not? I'm positive. Really? I don't care if you do it at the house. <laughs> I mean, you're plugging it in, right? And it's keeping everything together for you, so it's mindless, and you're not really doing anything. You're not managing that fire. That's the most important part. If we're talking about competition. I don't have a pellet smoker. Who, who cares? What's the difference? Are, are we going to talk about there's a difference between having a, a gravity-fed pit or a bullet-style smoker with an automatic pit temperature control device and a pellet cooker? There's no difference. Oh, yes, there is. No, there's absolutely not. You set a temperature on one, and that's it. That's it. That's so bad. We, we should outlaw it all. Let it all in or outlaw it all. I or got only offset. cook on offsets. That. There's no difference between sous vide or running automatic pit temperature control devices or running pellet cooks. There's no difference. No, I, yeah, I disagree with that, Doug. And I, I mean, sorry, Greg, and I'll tell you why. You can't overcook on sous vide. You set it at a temperature. You cannot go past that temperature. There's no skill in when to pull it out. Yeah, it manages and maintains the temperature for you, but the pit temperature control devices do the same thing, but you can overcook on with with a pellet smoker or pit, uh, I mean, pit control device. Now we're splitting the most feeblest of hairs. If you've gotten to a drunk stupor and you don't care about how much money you've spent on this competition, of course, you could absolutely overcook. I could leave my ribeye steak in the sous vide cooker for seven days, and when I take it out of the bag, it's probably going to fall apart. So while it's not overcooked, you're probably not going to be able to eat it. I don't think any of you guys are going to make the error of letting your meat overcook. When you're not tending the fire, that's all you're there to do at that point is to make sure that you're not letting the meat overcook. But there's no skill in it. There's no more skill in doing that than there is me putting a steak in a sous vide machine or using a pellet cooker. Well, come on over Saturday. We'll sous vide and microwave then. Well, big time. Well, you can overcook in a microwave. I think we can all agree on that. Especially hot dogs. Hot dog. (laughs) That's the only place for them. All right. Next question. Steve, we'll start with you. Air fryer. For or against? For what? I mean, just for for heating up snacks. Sure. Great. Yeah. I guess they're steak I don't have cooking, uh, French fries, hors d'oeuvres, pieces of beef. I I guess I don't, I don't have one. I've never I've never had one. I've got a uh, you got that big I've convection got thing. Popcorn a popcorn thing that's in heats air and pops popcorn. That's pretty good. I guess you could throw a hot dog down in there. So you don't My, have a you don't have an air fryer. No, oh. no, I don't have a sous vide either. Uh, John Solberg for or against air fryer? Hey, I have lots of ways to get to Chicago. I, 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 <laughs> I would never own one cause I just don't have counter space and I, I don't, I don't really know how much of a multitasker it is. So I'm going to just go to the side of against because I got to pick a side. I, I, I don't see the point. Stover for or against air fryers? Oh God. <laughs> for why not? I don't want to be a snob, Greg. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to cook with an air fryer. First of all, I mean, you sound they like a stupid. snob, but okay. No, they look stupid. They, I, I just don't <laughs> know what it is. I don't understand it. I, and I'll, you know, I mean, if if you wanted to hear another fart joke, I could make one. I don't want to. But let me tell you, I'm not against anything that people want to do if they want to discover cooking. Like, why are we pushing people away? So you know what, air fry your bird <laughs> if you want. Let's do it. Send me an air fryer. Doug, uh, good. Air pro or against air fryer? <laughs> Everyone knows I'm pro air fryer for the inside kitchen use. So, yeah, I mean, air fry your wings and fries and Brussels sprouts and chicken and do it all. Do it all on the, on the air fryer. But, hey, uh, I go back going back to the sous vide thing, you know, I, if someone kicks your butt using sous vide on a steak, you need to up your freaking game and grill a better steak. Also, if the rules yeah. – also, if the rules – I mean, we're all not like Steve who puts on his own competitions. He can make his own rules and uh, uninclude anybody he wants to. But if the rules otherwise don't not allow – for a sous vide or some type of an electrical temperature device to be in there, it's all fair game. So if you're getting beat by somebody that has that, 
It's not that guy's problem. He's not the bad cook. Oh, no, I didn't say it was. He's following the rules, and that's fine. I'm just going to change the rules. Yeah, but you think you're <laughs> – but I, I have an assumption, Steve, that you believe – that even if the guy with the sous vide beat you in a steak competition, you feel you're the better steak cook than he is. Well, I am. But you didn't <laughs> win, right? I mean, that's uh, what we're saying. I was cooking a real steak on a PK grill. <laughs> I wasn't heating it up in a plastic bag and then tenderizing it. But nobody's and, breaking the rules. He's not can cheating. They use a gas grill? Yes, yeah. of course. Sure, you can use a gas grill. Absolutely. I don't know why you would, but you can. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, David Huff, pro, uh, pro or against air fryers? I'm not against air fryers. I will never use one. I prefer just good old fat. Get a big old cast mm. iron, fill it up with whatever fat you choose, and fry your food in that. But I'm not against someone who wants to use an air fryer. Uh, I was a little weirded out by air fryers until my friend Doug Scheiding said that they were pretty cool, and then we got one. And yeah. I got to tell you, it's as close to regular lard frying as you can get. I mean, we use it a lot for uh, tots or fries or, you know, hors d'oeuvre type stuff that might call for a deep fry otherwise. And this thing is as close as you can get to a lard fry without having to put lard on your food. It's just hot air. It crisps it up really nice. Very convenient. Uh, was it a small oven? Is it like a small oven? Uh, it's like a bit. It's like a smaller convection oven, I guess. Right, Doug? To a certain degree. We, yeah, a, a forced pan convection pan oven yeah. Yeah, on steroids. Yeah. Okay. David, on a keto diet, this would be great. No, right. actually, keto wants the fat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, the only detractor, which multiple people have mentioned here, depending on what we've been talking about, is it takes up counter space. You know, I think from a home building standpoint, maybe people don't put enough premium on putting as much counter space as you possibly can in any home that you get or adding onto it. Or maybe that's kind of the downfall. The more counter space you have, the more crap you're going to be putting on counters, but neither here nor there, I guess. Uh, let's go to the next topic. Let's see. All right, let's try this one. Why not? Doug, lump or briquette? I am a uh, actually a lump guy. Mm. And uh, listening to Meathead, he has steered me towards a little bit on the briquette side. Mm -hmm. um, now, being, you know, because of it's a known source quantity of heat, et cetera, et cetera. But... Uh, uh, I don't like the foreign substances, and and yeah, I know it's probably little, but uh, I still don't like it. So B&B uh, &B actually has a lump briquette um, that's all natural. So uh, if I was going to cook with charcoal, I would like to try to cook with that. This isn't a lightning round, so I can say both. So, um, But if I had to choose between one or the other, I would say lump. David? Yeah, I've... I've preferred lump um, over briquette historically, but I agree with Doug after at least listening to Meathead uh, next time I cook on a charcoal grill, I might try briquette. Steve? Briquette all the way and everything I've got. PK, gravity feed. Um, I, I, I agree with Meathead. It's a known it, it's it, it it's a known quantity. You get your you know your temperatures. You don't have you take the uh, what if it bridges out of the equation? That's the problem I always have with a gravity feed. A lot of times you get a bridge in there, and um, all of a sudden your temperature goes down, and you're running around trying to poke the um, poke the uh, 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 briquette or not the briquettes, but the uh, lump charcoal down because you got a big air pocket in there. And with the briquette, you take that out of the equation. Uh, so I'm I'm 110 percent blue bag Kingsford. Keep it simple. Stover lump or briquette. Well, I have to agree. I want precision for cat all the way. Lump too big. We have problem with lump. <laughs> uh, sober. You know, we need to kill this even question. They're all similar products. They're, they have, they're two different things. They're, you know, it's like, why do I have to pick one? It's not, they're only similar. I'd like to say they're similar, but different. And I know that's not proper grammar. It's like, they're two different things. 
why does this continue to go on in the community? You, you need them both. They're both a tool. They both have a purpose. Why do I have to pick one? Greg? Uh, well, because it's my show and I'm asking you to pick one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's your show. I got to pick one. They're, two, they're, they're, they're not the same thing. So I'm going with both. If you're going to put a gun to my head, I'm going to go with briquettes. Um, put that gun away. I agree with John, by the way. I think that they have a purpose. Um, I will prefer lump. If I have to choose one or the other, I will go lump because I believe while I am not necessarily a huge fan of the inconsistent peace formations and uh, how hot it can typically burn, although I am able to manage that a little bit better uh, for whatever reason than some people. Briquettes are only going to be used for me if I break out the Weber Smoky Mountain. I'm going to be doing an overnight cook because I want the consistency. I want to know that it's going to burn the same way each and every time. I have a brisket or pork butt on and it's going to go 10, 11, 12 hours, especially overnight if I'm not going to be around or available because I'm sleeping. Otherwise, I love lump. I think it tastes better. I think it burns cleaner. Uh, obviously, there's a considerable amount uh, of less ash that it's produced over the course of the burn cycle. And if I'm grilling, uh, I think it's a far superior product uh, than briquettes are. So I will choose briquette. I'm sorry. I will choose lump over briquette. But as I just mentioned, uh, I will use briquette on overnight cooks just because there is that consistency. Here we go. This is the big question of the day here for this segment. And we will quickly go around the panel. Starting with John Solberg, cilantro, for or against? You know, it is the uh, widely most widely used herb on the planet, so I use it all the time, but I cannot eat it. What? You use it, it all the time, but you can't eat it? I cannot eat it. To me, it tastes like soap. It tastes exactly like soap. And there's other people in the world that have that same thing happens to them. But there's no way you can cook in this world and not use it. So I do use it. So you're eating it? Um, tasting it, but uh, no, I don't necessarily eat what I cook. I'm cooking for oh, somebody else. Oh, dear. But uh, you have to have it. It's always in their fridge. I am personally against it. Steve, cilantro. Uh, sorry, cilantro. Yes or no? No. No. Uh, David Huff, cilantro, yes or no? Uh, I like it in my Hispanic food. I do not like it in my Thai food. Doug, cilantro, yes or no? Absolutely. I'm from Texas. I'd love cilantro. Of course. And John, and John, you are what's called a super taster. There's a gene that people have where it, it actually makes it taste like soap to you. So because of that, you can't use it in competition cooking, but in regular cooking, mm. you know, for, uh, you know, friends and family and stuff like that, add the cilantro. Stove or cilantro, yes or no? 24-7, and John, I'm sorry for your loss because I don't know what my life would be like if I couldn't have cilantro in everything I eat. Coriander, cilantro, whatever you want to call it, I'm there. No soap for me. Uh, and I also... Echo those sentiments. Cilantro, yes, antro. Please, often, always, pour it on. Let me bathe in it. It's some of the best tasting stuff I've ever had. And what puts it over the top and what it hangs the moon for me is when Steven Reichland is on PBS or whatever show he's on and that ingredient is called for in a recipe, he will do his best Giada De Laurentiis, who talks <laughs> perfect regular normal human english and when he gets to that ingredient he does the and then you take the cilantro you know giada does the whole everything's english until it's something italian and then she like rolls the r's do you take the pecorino reggiano I'm like what the hell is wrong with this lady aside from you know what anyway cilantro has three for it and three against it so cilantro is a draw wow and I think that was coming. Or right, we got one more segment coming up. Stover's in. Steve Ray is in. John Solberg is in. David Huff is in. And Doug Scheiding is in. We're coming back with topics that may or may not include things like 
I can tell a difference between the flavor of the pellets I use. But can you tell a difference in quality? Or... How about... Predictions for 2019? Still to come. Hey, let me talk to you quickly about Southside Market and Barbecue. Attention folks in the biz of barbecue. Established in 1882, Southside Market. The oldest barbecue joint in Texas. They've been owned and operated by the same family for three generations. They offer premium Central Texas barbecue products. Products? Products. Slow smoked over real wood. Shipping, distributing, manufacturing sausages for all companies across the United States. From food trucks to multi-chain restaurants, Southside Sausage can be on your menu too. All meats processed in that on-site USDA inspected facility. A trusted partner with a focus on quality and authenticity. Wholesale options available, shipping nationwide via FedEx. You can also get them on food service distribution via Cisco, U.S. Foods, and Martin Foods. Co-packaging capable from research and development to package completion. They can follow your recipe or help you develop something brand new from scratch. They also have private labeling opportunities available as well. Here's what you do. You visit southsidemarket.com for all the information. If you're going to buy stuff online, be sure to use coupon code BBQ Central, all one word, lowercase, saves you 10%. I tried it out last week, worked like a champ. People actually emailing me over the course of the week because I guess people aside from myself sending Southside Market products for gifts and so forth, using the code BBQ Central to get that 10% off. So it does work. And people at Southside get to see that it's tracking. Kind of unique. Anyway, the website, southsidemarket.com. That's southsidemarket.com. 10% off when you use code BBQ Central. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. And this segment is brought to you by Fireboard. Monitor up to six different temperatures simultaneously. Connect to Wi-Fi for cloud-based monitoring or connect via Bluetooth. If you have Alexa or the Google Assistant in your home, you're in luck because Fireboard fully integrated with both. Find out more by visiting fireboard.com or call 816-945-2232. I wish I would have got that for Christmas, actually. Fireboard. Anybody on the panel have a fireboard? Anybody? Anybody? No? Stover? I have nothing. <laughs> well, that's somewhat sad, I guess. No, I have a tra I have my Traeger. I'm, I, you know what? I mean, I wait for people to send me stuff, you know? I've been waiting a long time. Hey, why not? Stover is joining us. Doug Shiding is in. David Huff and John Solberg and Steve Ray. Those are the embedded correspondents. All right, so uh, let's go, hmm, looking through the list of topics here. All right, let's quickly do this since we kind of jumped off on an old-timey topic of discussion, which is like sous vide, and then that raised into pellet or uh, pit temperature control. Let's do lighter fluid or not. Steve Ray, lighter fluid or not? Uh, yeah, it depends on what cooker I'm using. In my gravity feeds, no. In my PK, yes. I, I've never had a problem with it. Use it all the time in my grills, not in my, uh, you know, not in my smokers, but uh, in the in the grill where it gets plenty of air, and I let it. I start the I start the uh, briquettes in the chimney. Uh, absolutely, that's how I start it. John Solberg, grilling uh, lighter fluid, yes or no? Yes, I'm never without it. Do you and use it? There's lots of methods to light a fire, and I use all of them. All right. And it is one of those methods I use. And I think it's another myth. It goes back to 1972 when somebody's dad poured way too much on there and made their burger or hot dog taste like it that we need to work on killing off. I can't be the only guy. That stuff is everywhere. <laughs> Stover, uh, lighter fluid, yes or no? This is what I thought was barbecue for the first uh, 30 years of my life was lighter fluid. Uh, I'm going to go no, I don't use it. It is a tool, like John said, and I think I wouldn't judge anyone uh, for using it, but I've seen it be overdone too much, and I don't trust it. David Hoff, lighter fluid, yes or no? 
Sure, I'm fine with it. I have a friend that will not eat anything if he sees someone start a fire with lighter fluid, and I just, that's over the top. Uh, lighter fluid's fine, whatever it takes to start the fire. Doug Shiding, lighter fluid, yes or no? No, use a chimney. Uh, somebody want to ask me? Uh, uh, yeah, Greg, I, what do you think? Lighter I, fluid? No! No! No, 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 no. Stop it. You guys, how ashamed you must feel to sit stop here and it. say, you stop it, mister. now you stop Wait it. It's my minute. time. You had well, all of your time to talk. Now shut up. I'm on. You people are going to sit here and tell me that if you did stuff 30 years, you know, things change over 30 years, like these aluminum cans that you can put charcoal in. You can put a little paraffin cube or newspaper or Crisco soaked paper towel or something underneath there and start it without any of that other crap in there. It's safe. It looks cool. It heats up quicker. I mean, come on. What are you doing? Stop. What's in the putting... paraffin cube? Shh, shh, shh. Not lighter fluid. Uh -huh. It's it's completely healthy. You can pick up a paraffin cube and eat it. I believe on uh -huh. the bottle of uh, lighter fluid, you can ingest it. <laughs> right? Light, light right? one of those paraffin cubes on fire and see how much black smoke it produces right. compared to two or three ounces of lighter fluid. Okay. Well, I'm just here to tell you, uh, A, I know you're embarrassed and you don't want to admit it, but lighter <laughs> fluid is not the way <laughs> to go. Not, I am loud and proud on it. John, you're just I doubling. Your I know. Shut you're up just now. doubling down. I get it. You have to do it for the show. <laughs> but I know we all know that lighter fluid is not the way to go, and I'm going to buy all of you who are into lighter fluid charcoal chimneys. And if you don't want to use the paraffin cubes, you can use something way more natural like newspaper and light it and away you go. Come on, guys. Let's get into the 21st century. I didn't tell you I didn't use chimneys. I have five or six chimneys of various oh, sizes. Oh, you're pro-lighter fluid. You said, you said pro-lighter fluid. You said? I am pro-lighter fluid. Okay, well, I'm, that's I'm wrong. I'm also pro-paraffin cube. I'm pro-tumbleweed. Oh. I got flatwoods. I got big, What about big green egg starters? What's in those? Oh, they're fine. They were um, good. They work great. It's like, so what is wrong with three ounces of lighter fluid? We need to get out of the stone age and help people get into this sport and pastime. Lighter fluid is the them. stone age. It is the stone age. That's where the stone age started with lighter fluid. So the, the bad started in the stone age. It's time to try to get people into this more than say, hey, you're, you're doing this wrong. Talk about a snob. You're Just right. Saying. You know what? I want less people. Get the fuck out. Get out. You're using lighter fluid. Get out. You're banned from the show. You're banned from my podcast. You're banned from live fire cooking. And if I see you on the street, we're going to fight. Right, Stover? Cut his mic. Cut his mic, Greg. Cut right. His mic. Oh, my God. I am on fire. All right. Uh, let's go to 2019. Well, okay. Let's quickly do this. I don't, I don't know how many people gave any thought about this, but uh, over the span of 2018, because there's only a week left, did anything come up that caught you by surprise in the live fire industry or that was a trend in the beginning of the year that is spun downward out of favor that you didn't think was going to happen? Something along these lines, you quickly, one event that happened in 2018 that you saw good, bad, or ugly, and we'll start with Doug. Uh. The disintegration of KCBS. I really didn't <laughs> see that totally coming. Um, I thought they would pull their their bootstraps up, up and uh, get up, get the ship righted, and um, that's actually been a surprise to me. David Huff. Uh, that's actually exactly what I was going to say. So thanks, Doug. Hmm. Uh, Steve Ray. Uh, the there was a uh, incident at a uh, contest in a KCBS event, and the uh, punishment that came down was, I think, a two-year ban on a person from competing. And um, I was a little, I was a little surprised at the harshness. I wasn't, I was not privy to what exactly happened and what what was said, what was not said. But I thought a, a two-year ban on competing for bad behavior was. Uh, maybe a little, maybe a little harsh, but like I say, I was not privy to who was hurt, who was not hurt or how bad the person was hurt or how far it went. So I just, I just, 
I, I guess I thought the incident was was surprising to me that that somebody would uh, take out a, a physical advance towards somebody at a barbecue contest after we've always talked about uh, family being friends first and foremost. That I know I know it can happen anywhere, not just barbecue. But uh, I was a little surprised at that. Stover, something that happened in 2018 that uh, you thought was cool, bad, or indifferent. You know, I think we've reached a tipping point or we're very near it of competition barbecue flavors. I think uh, we've all gone too far. Um, I don't like what's going on. I think it hurts my mouth when I've tried all that stuff. And I think we're going to go back to a lot more natural food, a lot more simple food, because uh, there's only so much salt and MSG you can put in your food. Uh, my surprise, and it's not necessarily a surprise, but I guess it is, the continued popularity and rise of just being visible to the American public of competition, stay cooking in general. Uh, if this is a segment of competition that has taken off more over the last 16 to 24 months than I have seen any other food sport take off, everybody buys into it. Everybody thinks that they can cook a great steak. Uh, Whoever is doing their sanctioning bodies are capitalizing on that mindset. And I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe another sanctioning body or two enter in over the next couple of years, but you have a uh, steak cook off association, which is by far the biggest and the best right now. You have the American competitive steak Alliance or association, which is in Columbus, Ohio here. And then you have whatever the KCBS is going to attempt to put together and, and compete with that. But I mean, there's three right there. And five years ago, there wasn't even one. Uh, so that, continues to be a little bit of a, an amazing thing to me in a good way, because I think that has that. I don't know. I mean, let's quickly go back around the table. Uh, Stover, do you think that if push came to shove, you could see competition barbecue get swallowed up and kicked out by steak cook-off association or, or competitive steak cooking in general? Yes or no? <clears throat> no, there's only so many ways to cook a steak. I think it's kind of boring. I think it'll die out. I think it's Ooh. fun because it's fast. But what we're really talking about to last is food and cooking in general. And when you're talking about such a kind of simple process, once they've refined it to the point they've refined it, where they literally tell you, you should have these tools to make it to win. Uh, I think it's, it's gone uh, and jumped the shark. Steve, do you think uh, competitive steak cooking could overthrow competitive barbecue? No, no, I don't. I think, um, I think competitive barbecue is here to stay. I think steak cook-offs are riding a wave right now and just like uh, barbecue did three to four years ago uh it'll even out um once they get rid of the sous vide rule that'll help and uh, a lot of people will drop out after that because you'll have to actually be able to cook a steak to enter so there you go but um no it won't it won't um, move uh uh barbecue i you know i question why why uh the kcbs even even entered the steak cook-off business i think it's going to be a a flash in the pan for them. I really do. They need to, I think they need to concentrate on what they do best and that's barbecue. David Huff, you think competitive steak could push barbecue up? In terms of popularity, in terms of participation, I actually absolutely do think that. And I'll tell you why the cost of entry to a steak contest, I mean, you can get a grill, you can go up. There's a lot of people that cook steaks. Not everybody spends, you know, 10, 12, 16 hours in their backyard with the smoker, um, smoking barbecue. Um, but I think the rules are more straightforward. Um, everyone's cooking a single steak, not different meats, less interpretation of, of what's good and what's not. I, I think it absolutely, people will begin to participate more in a steak cook-off than they will a barbecue contest simply because of cost of entry, time involved, uh, and a lot of different factors. Doug, you seem to be shaking your head in agreement. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, uh, competition barbecue is hard. You know, the number of people competing in competition barbecue is going down. I actually think steak um, is probably going to grow by another two or three times. I think there's going to be mm. 10 times as many steak cookers because it's easy. We're an easy, lazy society. Competition barbecue is hard. There's going to be 10 times as many people cooking steak cook-offs as there, there will be competition barbecue. And competition barbecue is going to continue to dwindle down. Uh, I agree with Doug. I think uh, competition barbecue is going to become some type of real special 
niche or cottage industry where the people that find the need to want to spend that kind of money will continue to do it. And uh, the other people will just go to competitive stake. Uh, you can literally get in a car with a charcoal chimney and some charcoal and compete and actually do pretty well in a stake competition. Uh, you don't need big motorhomes. You don't need to feel like you're keeping up with the Joneses in order to feel like you have a shot. Uh, that's exactly the reason I would never even begin to think about entering a barbecue competition. A, it costs a lot of freaking money, and I don't think I have all the tools that I would need in order to, to be competitive. And I, if I go somewhere, I want to go to win, and I don't think I have a snowball's chance in hell to win any type of barbecue competition. But if I show up at a state competition, I think odds are 50-50 I could go in and win. Why not? I mean, it's a couple steaks. I can cook a couple steaks, no doubt. Uh, grill, gas sous vide, you name it, I think I have a shot at doing it, and I know I don't have a shot at winning a barbecue competition. All right, uh, let's quickly go around for 2019 predictions. Steve, let's start with you. Oh, let's see. Man, I've got this written down. Hang on just a second. Uh, KCBS yes. will announce that they will be allowing gas smokers and electric smokers in competition for 2020. Wow. Doug shotting if he cooks as rogue cookers. Yes. Win the Houston Livestock <gasps> in the you know, barbecue contest this year. Look at that's a pretty bold prediction, Steve. I got to tell you. Wow. Look at you. Not as his hired hand. And my third prediction, and I'm going to hit it hard this year, I will GC a KCBS barbecue contest. Book it. Now, the 20 Book it. How many, Karma. how many are you going to do? I'm going to do 10. 10. All right. So you have a one in 10 chance. I got a 10 out of 10 chance. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're doing 10, you I mean, we're hoping you can pull one out of 10 at least, right? That, that was still a 10 out of 10 chance. Though. Yeah. Stover, uh, your thoughts for 2019? I think now that Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters is barbecuing, we will start to see all sorts of rockers barbecuing. I think you're going to see brisket being sold by Iron Maiden. I think you're going to see Guns N' Roses slinging chicken wings in Vegas. And I think all Eating. sorts of rockers will start slinging smoked meats. Uh, John Solberg, your 2019 thoughts? Uh, KCBS will continue its decline and be consumed by the SCA state cook-off competitions. Um, Steve Ray will not GC a KCBS competition wow. in 2019. Boom. <laughs> what? And David's Tough YouTube channel yep. may get some videos and see some traction. So I'm going to say Dave Huff's channel is going to finally get some traction. Nice. Uh, all right, David Huff, your thoughts? Hold on. I'm a little teary eyed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I have some bold predictions here. Um, first, I think KCBS will eliminate the decorating in their box. I think they're going to pull out the greenery. They're going to get rid of it and realize it's ridiculous. It's either in there or it's not. That's the worst part of the KCBS judging. Second, Greg, you had Michael Simon on. Yep. I believe by the end of 2019, you will have Bobby Flay on your show. Yes. All right. And finally, you're not going to get in. But, Greg, you're going to make the list nominated for the Hall of Fame this the year. Nine, I feel the, it in my bones. The final nine? <laughs> yep, you're going to make the final nine nomination. Yeah, you're right. not going to get in, but you're going to make the nomination. I was almost in the Barbecue Wizard Hall of Fame this year. So, you know, I like my odds of potentially getting into the National Barbecue Hall of Fame. Um, I will. Band. Yeah, I, we'll see. So, I don't really have any predictions. Um, I think here's who I would like to have. On the show in 2019. Here we go. In no particular order. He, he was just mentioned a few minutes ago by Sto uh, by SH3. Dave Grohl. I would like to have him on. Of course. Hit while the iron's hot. Uh, nothing has panned out so far. Number two. This guy was also mentioned. I would love to have Bobby Flay on. Bobby, you're always welcome. We can talk horse racing. We both love horses first and foremost. Number three. Really good chance in real life and reality. Adam Perry Lang, I would like to have back on in 2019. Hopefully everybody's making notes here so we can see what my winning percentage is at the end. Number four. Come on. Come on. Ina Garten. 
Chances? Oh, man. This last one. Okay. Total, totally outside the box. But I have been inspired by the Instagram superstar that was on this show last week, Jack Arnold, who has somehow woven himself within the fabric of the Carolina Panthers. Now, if you were paying attention to that interview, I think he went over how he did that. However, I'm looking at 50 different things, and i got to be honest, Jack, I totally missed out exactly how you wove yourself in there. Maybe it was because some Panthers were watching his cooking, and, and that's how it – nevertheless, in 2019, there's a very mediocre chance that you might see Baker Mayfield on this show. Baker Mayfield. Those are my thoughts for 2019. All right, we're going to wrap the show up right after this. Stick around as we talk to you quickly about. Hold on, Doug. We'll be back in a second. We'll be back in a second. Jeez. It's a live show. We got time here. Traeger Grills. Behind every great meal is a great grill, but not just any grill. A Traeger Grill. And the Timberline is Traeger's most advanced grill yet. It allows you to grill, smoke, bake, roast, braise. And barbecue like a pro, no matter what your level, thanks to the incredible wood fire taste. Seriously, you don't know flavor till you're cooking with it. Traeger Grills use all natural hardwood pellets as fuel, so you're literally cooking with flavor. From low and slow smoked ribs to a seared steak, even a baked apple pie, Traegers can handle it all. And the Traeger Timberline makes it even easier thanks to the Wi Fi capability. You can check on your cooks, kick up temperatures, set custom cook cycles anytime, anywhere, all right through the Traeger app on your phone. In fact, I need to go check my brisket right now. Wait, hold on. I got to show it. Find one at your local Traeger dealer or check them out online at TraegerGrills.com. How about this? Want to beef up that barbecue game in 2019? Traeger Shop Class is going coast to coast, bringing you barbecue knowledge and amazing wood-fired food everywhere they go. Taught by professional pit masters, you'll take home all the skills you need to reach barbecue glory. You can find a shop class near you and sign up today by going to TraegerGrills.com slash shop class. That's TraegerGrills dot com slash shop class we are back with the final embedded correspondence segment for 2018 stick around we'll be right back whole packers full racks legs and thighs injecting butts if you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best Triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. All right, welcome back. Bed correspondence with me, John Dawson, weighing in with his 2019 prediction. Here it is. It's pretty funny, by the way. I predict that one of Greg's advertisers will take the time to actually update their ad reads. <laughs> funny <laughs> just one just one john says he could read them all from memory i could too i just hold it there because it's like my blankie like linus from the peanuts uh all right doug go ahead okay S steve thank you for the uh the the houston rodeo but it's so corporate that it's it's almost impossible for me to get in as road cookers i tried a couple years ago but uh anyway so all right my predictions Tuffy had a down year. Tuffy is going to have a comeback year next year. Hmm. His his best friend and from high school and culinary partner, Franz Berger, did not participate with him this year due, due to some scheduling conflicts. So he is going to be available next year. And I predict that Tuffy will have a much better year next year because of that. Um, number two, there's a new barbecue restaurant in Austin called Brett's Barbecue. He's a competition guy, does a lot of catering and, and things. He, he will be on the map soon uh, as one of the top barbecue places in Texas and even in Austin, competing against the likes of Franklin and Tootsie's, etc. He's actually located um, uh, between Louis Mueller's as well as Tootsie's. So he's he's almost equal equal distance form. So he will be on the barbecue map in the near future, is my prediction. Brett Boren is his name. Okay, everyone knows. Well, if if you're an avid listener to the show, you know my thoughts about the World Food Championships. Um, 
I've got two predictions about, as it relates to the World Food Championships. Moving to Dallas is going to be a fantastic move for them. Oh. They are going to get they are going to get IBCA cookers, just as Mike McLeod says. Um, I've already talked to a few, and now that they are in Dallas, people are planning on going. So they are going to start getting some some cookers from IBCA. They only had twenty two entries in the IBCA yeah. there in Orange Beach. It was dying a slow death, you know. And as Mike said, you know, he, he, I don't think he, I, I don't think he's going to get the hundred thousand in terms of uh, you know people attending and things like that. But he is going to get the barbecue cookers coming back in in a large way. Um, so as it relates to that, I think he's going to turn barbecue into a people's choice based on the last interview. You know, he talked about ribbers and things like that. He's going to use barbecue to feed the general public that comes in the door. So that, I think, may be a, a detriment to having people come. But for this first next year, he's going to have a lot of people cooking in the event. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything to add before we turn loose here this evening? Greg, I just want to say a very Merry Christmas to you and to your family, and thank you for uh, – the opportunity of uh, showcasing my talents on the fourth Tuesday of every. <laughs> I really, I really of course, I did. Um, and I want to say uh, to Steve, John, and David, uh, Doug, and Stover, you know, I have a. Uh, I mean, you guys are basically kind of you know uh, the majority of the inner circle and sounding board here at the Barbecue Central show. And for the folks that don't really know, uh, there's some other guys. Uh, uh, whether you believe it or not, John Dawson is actually a fairly uh, pivotal guy that I like to, to sound stuff on because he's a, a yeah. pretty honest guy. Uh, like him, hate him, or uh, leave him in the ground bleeding. Um, and it's it's good to know that there's a core group of people that we can go back to and soundboard off of each other and pitch bits to and pitch show ideas. And uh, there's been a number of times when you guys have... Oh, now hold on a goddamn minute. This is barbecue. It's getting all good, and then, uh, you know, you got that happening. I hit the wrong I hit the wrong button. How did that happen? I took top of the hour out. All right, whatever. So um, it, it's great to have a, a good core, uh, and a lot of people don't see it. You know, this is a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. There's a lot of chats that are going on every day, a lot of emails that are transpiring, a lot of instant messages. A lot of shared Google documents, uh, trying to put stuff together here. I think everybody that is on the phone right now has booked uh, one, at least a minimum of one guest here on the show over the course of uh, the time they've been associated. So, uh, you know, I want to take uh, make sure that I take time to extend my utter thanks and gratitude to each and every one of you guys uh, that helped make the show better. Um, whether you think you are or you're not playing as bad. I mean, trust everybody's playing a very big role in helping the show grow. And uh, we look forward to what 2019 has to offer, what you guys are going to be bringing to the table, uh, some adjustments that I may or may not be making to the show. And uh, we'll continue to, to press forward and trying to continue to be the leader in whatever barbecue show, podcast, whatever it is. So we'll continue to try to lead the way here and make the right changes and cover all the topics and not be afraid to ask the right and the hard questions and demand answers. So, uh, gentlemen, Steve, John, David, Doug, Stover, appreciate the time this evening. And we will talk to you as they say next year. There they are. <laughs> I hate when people say that we'll talk to you next year. All right. This is Jennifer Palmer. Thank you, Jennifer, for the ID. And this is Barbecue So we'll go ahead and wrap it up all the way back in the first hour. It was embedded correspondence segment talk, right? Of course. So it was in the second hour. A great Christmas evening. A great Christmas evening. Hopefully you found enjoyment here as we were picking the brains from uh, a bunch of random barbecue folks. Absolutely spectacular. Great time. Again, appreciate all the embedded correspondents carving time, especially on this night, Christmas night, for doing the show. Uh, still a little up in the air on what's going to be happening next week during the New Year's Day show. Again, I would bet more on a best of, but we'll see how it shakes out. I will keep you updated 
Follow me on social media if you want to at BBQ Central Show. On the Twitter at BBQ Central Show on Instagram. Uh, that will give you your quickest updates. Uh, also on Facebook slash BBQ Central Show. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas today. If you're celebrating that, if not, and your holiday hasn't happened yet, I hope you have a great one when you get to it. September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And until the next live show, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. <laughs>